get this? Ah, there we go. All right, cool. Hey, first of all, guys, thank you so much for being here. Um, and I, I like I won't riff what it took to kind of do this this year because obviously it was a little more challenging than we kind of could have pulled out because of how you know things were going. But part of even the theme, every year we have a theme, right? The theme for two reasons this year is can't stop, won't stop. Obviously, it's been a couple years of craziness in the industry. But for, for the people that are very, very committed to, I would say, changing for other people's lives, which are you here in the seat, right? Can't stop, won't stop. We don't just, you know, I would say, leave because something becomes challenging, right? So I wanted that to be the theme that when everybody's here, hey, listen, you're here, you're here for good. I, my, one of my big things is to also help coaches and gym owners and people in the industry build careers, right? So help as many people as possible, you know, transform their lives, but build careers, right? How many times have you heard somebody that's a really good coach, really passionate about it, and then leave the industry? And to me, that's, that's sad because it's like there's so many more people to help, right? So that's, that's part of the theme, right? It's been a very challenging time, but we can't stop, we won't stop. And also, obviously, I love Bad Boy from the 90s, so if you guys remember that, and Diddy, that's another reason why. And so I, I wanted my first presentation to be very, very valuable and practical so that you guys can like take stuff, not only principle-based stuff, but like some tactical things, take and run with it. And honestly, like if you do the things that I'll talk about, like legitimately this week, put them to play and make 10 times more money than what you spent on, on this event, period. Seriously, that's, that's, that was my first thought process. Right when we start off, that's what I want to do. And things that have helped me in, in vigor, like I said, both the facility that we have in Slovenia and the one here in Seattle, you know, be around for, you know, that one for 15 years, this one for going on 13 plus years. And like, instead of just being in theory and like, hey, like this sounds good, this is stuff that we use, we do. And ironically, so you guys will see the first slide. This was actually a presentation, that, that first slide from a presentation I did in Slovenia uh, a couple years ago, <laughs> and actually more than two years ago. So you'll see how it's relevant to today, okay? But great coaching is still, the best marketing, right? I'm, I'm a big fan of marketing, of sales, of, like I said, business, of social media. I'm not the person that's against it whatsoever, right? But great coaching is still the best marketing. And I'll not only kind of show you guys what I mean by that, but then I would say format it a little bit for the digital age, right? Because once again, you can't, you know, you can't avoid being on social media today. It's smart, it's good, it's great if you're doing it the right way. So I wanted to kind of sync those two things up. Now, this is like a very apocalyptic picture, and it's funny because I was having a presentation on customer experience, and this was the first picture that popped up, and sometimes in the last two years, it kind of feels like this is where we've been. But th this is the reason I put this picture up was because I believe that if you have a brick and mortar business, if you coach people face to face, honestly, even if you coach them online, if, let's say tomorrow, you know, the internet goes out, like everything crashes in the world. There's no media. You can't watch TV. You can't watch social. Uh, you know, none of that exists. You can't send out an email, right? If, if that happened, would your business still be able to survive and thrive? And, and I believe that is how you should approach it. Meaning, okay, and, and 15 years ago when we started, I mean, there was almost nothing. Like we started in, in the woods in Slovenia, started training people. You know, group went from two to four people to eight people to 10, 12, 15, people were asking what we were doing. You know, I kind of pushed to my brother to, to, we got a 470 square foot room. So it wasn't really a gym, it was like a room, okay? There was, there was no, nothing that we could share other than word of mouth. If people were talking about it, right? Man, you gotta come to this workout. These guys are crazy, right? Boom, person shows up, we train them. Hey, how do, how do I join this? What do I have to pay? How do I get involved, okay? Sometimes like today, people are forgetting about this stuff. Right, that that is still the greatest way to do it. Now, you can, you can put it on steroids and you can kind of supercharge it with social media, which we'll talk about a little bit too, okay? Because at the end of the day, it's like this, right? Berardi said this, like, two, you got two goals, right? Do a great job, let everybody know about it. But there's, uh, this is uh, something that Frank Kern said and it always stuck with me, right? There's three levels of influence that we can employ. What we say about ourselves, which is not really, I mean, it's powerful. Imagine, right, somebody comes to you and you're like, yeah, I'm the shit. I'm great. It, it doesn't have as much weight and value. Number two is what others say about us and our services. Very, very, very important. Very important. 
That's your success stories, testimonials, the word of mouth that we talked about, right? When somebody leaves your gym and goes like, hey, you got to join this gym. Like, you got to, like, the results that I have and, like, the way that I feel in the community, like, you got to try it out, right? That's probably one of the greatest things that you can have, okay? And you should be, and you should be conscious about also, I would say, saving those assets, right, for your before and after pictures, the text people send you. We'll, we'll, we'll go into that a little bit later. But one of the things that people, I would say, don't do enough of and drop the ball off is number three, which is demonstrate about your stuff, right? Give value, like give people results ahead of time, okay? Because what it does is it, it, it triggers an internal decision trigger, right? It's not me telling you you should do something. It's you telling you that you should do something, right? And that gets done from everything from content, like valuable content, podcasts, meeting somebody face-to-face -face and showing them something that's very valuable before they ever sign up with you, right? That is, the, the, I would say, the least utilized, and I'm going to get you guys to, like, really think about not only doing that but making it a habit in, in your lives, okay? So this is the, the foundation of what I believe, you know, builds a very, very successful business. Like I said, the foundational part, three C's, customer experience, coaching, and culture. And we're going we're gonna to talk about two specifically in, in today's presentation, and that's coaching and customer experience. And what it does is it creates the three R's. What, what do we all want? Right? We want to get results for our clients. We want retention. We want them to stay as long as possible. And then have those people refer us other friends and family because they're so happy and excited about what they experience. Right? Those three R's. And a lot of times, like, you kind of want to go through that checklist and go, like, hey, how are you doing this in your business? I don't care if you're offline or if you're online. It doesn't matter. So these are principle-based things, okay? Are you getting consistent results? Are you known for that? From there, what's your retention like? And obviously, if you have any type of billing system, CRN system, you can see what is the average customer lifetime value, right? That's, that's also going to help you with your marketing, what you spend, and then referrals. I used to have a rule, like, if we're not getting five to six referrals per month, should you really be spending a lot of money on marketing? Answer, not really, right? If you're not getting referrals, there, there's, a, there's a problem there. Now, maybe it's because you're not asking for them, you don't have a system. We'll go through some of that today, too, right? But it's, it's like there's, there's a problem, there's a bottleneck, and you got to find it, and you got to figure it out, okay? Now, I know this is a very um, basic kind of thing to understand, but I promise you this, like, for people, they will stay because of knowing that, like, you care about them more so than the knowledge that you have, right? Learn that sometimes the hard way, which, like, because you're, an, you know, an expert and you have every certification in the world and all this good stuff. And people, you know what one of the things that, like, when we would have surveys or uh, when we get feedback from, from clients of why they left, it was the biggest one was didn't feel cared for. Didn't feel cared for. Okay, so... The, the results, like we had people that would get results and left because they didn't feel cared for. And there's an actually a very, very interesting story from, from PN that, you know, there was a lady that lost 65 pounds and it was, she was saying to others in a forum that she didn't get what she wanted to from the program. And it's like, hold on, I don't understand. Like you, you lost 65 pounds. How did you not get what you want from the program? She was looking for guidance and coaching and like being cared for and because she didn't get that she felt the program didn't get what she wanted think about that because all of us here if i say to you hey listen i have a client they lost 65 pounds you're all going like oh man like that's dope she probably referred a lot of people this that the other but this is the person that left and told others not to go there right feelings over knowledge guys i know that it's like you know i, I can't teach you that i can't teach you that but um, I'll, I'll give just another example of one, of one of the people that's really influenced me, even though it's a completely different industry, is Danny Meyer. Uh, if you guys haven't read the book Setting the Table, absolutely do. But he talks about the 51ers, okay? The 51 like 49, imagine that 49 points out of 100 points is everything your program design. Uh, you're really good at, for instance, communication and influence. Uh, you really you understand vectors of force production. Yay, you know what I mean? All that good shit, like the tactical stuff, if you were the best in the world at that, that would be 49 out of 100 points, okay? The other 51 is empathy, 
right? It's like team play, uh, being, uh, being a team player, being compassionate, right? Being able to communicate with the person, being great at listening, okay? So one, hire 51ers, always, because you can teach the tactical stuff all day long, right? That's one of the things that I would say for me is a big thing. I would rather have somebody that has the 51. I can teach you everything on the practical and tactical side. The other way around, I mean, you can know everything, but if you don't have this, people won't stay. Okay, so, and, and like I said, we could dive deep into that, but just make that a big circular thing. That if you're building teams in this industry, in any service industry, hire 51ers, okay? Now, at the end of the day, okay, every single time that you go to a rest, if you go to a restaurant, somebody comes to your class, somebody comes to your session, right? They're, whether they say it out loud or if a friend goes like, hey, I heard you went to a bigger ground, how was it, right? How was it? And it's like, eh, it's all right, right? I mean, think about re restaurants, right? If, if, if I ask you, how was this restaurant? You were like, it's all right. Like, am I going to want to go there? Like, there's nothing inside of me that's going to go like, wow, I really want to go to a restaurant. That's, eh. N nobody's going to do that, right? Nobody's going to do that. Now, if you're like rocky at the top of the stairs, like, oh, my God, like, I took a bite of the appetizer and my taste buds were exploding. It was a symphony of flavors on my tongue. Like, I couldn't know what was happening. And then from there, it was this, that. You got, you got to go to this restaurant. You got to go to this restaurant, right? That's usually what Ferruja will tell me after he goes somewhere, eats some good food. <laughs> He'll give me a great explanation on it. But that's... But that's how people, like, if, if somebody comes to your trial, they come to a first workout, they come to a charity boot camp, and go like, hey, listen, I, heard, I, heard, I saw you went to um, that spot, Vicky Ground, how was it? Right? They should be like, I don't know, like, I came in, we did these dynamic warm-ups, like, my back's been hurting for, like, a month, but after that, it felt so good. I don't know what the hell we were doing. Guy was talking about, you know, breathing and mobility, but it was great. And then from there, he told, he told a speech and made me emotional, and I was like, what the hell's going on? Is he Tony Robbins and I? Like, what's... And then we had this workout, and he was regressing movements. I wasn't, you know, hurt. Everybody was cheering me on and high-fiving me. And I left there, and I was just, like, feeling like a champion. So if they, if they come from that session telling their friends that, what do you think that happens? Uh, can I come next time? Can I, what, 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 what's going on? Right, or it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. And the thing is, like, you have to consciously think about these things. Like, you have to consciously think about how are people coming and leaving your sessions? Right? And like, I will look at body language of people, right? They're walking out like, you know, or they're walking out like, they came in a certain way, but then walking out like, pep to the step, okay? We'll talk about high fives and everything else, right? But because this is, you guys have heard it, right? Doing this in the last two years. I mean, it's been part of the marketing. Group training is dead. You know, large group is dead. And it's like, it's not dead. It's not, here's the thing. If you're excellent and the best at the stuff that you do, nothing will ever die, right? One, for a while, one-on-one -on -one personal training was dead. Sure, okay. Right, I'm sure at some point in time in the next years, something will be dead, okay? But it's far from dead, okay? It's far from dead. Now, here, here's one of the things that I've, I can say. It's like this very simple thing that I did for like the last 15 plus years that's been so effective that because I consult so much. Like me, me and Steve help a lot of gym owners and coaches but I also go to a lot of facilities and look at what's going on and kind of try to see behind the scenes. And the thing that I don't see is that, like the preparation. Right? And I love this post by Brian, Brian Tracy. <laughs> Effective performance is preceded by painstaking preparation. And I spent years and years and years, like when I would do group training classes, the night before, I have these four by six cards. Right? You can see them on the left. I still use a ton of them, right? And I would write down on a four by six card. Like, not only, I mean, obviously I'd have the training session planned out but I'd like write down the story that I tell, right? And you guys saw like Martin yesterday if you were in a hands-on and I've, I've, you know, I've had been able to be around Martin for 15 years, I've known him for 15 years. Taught me like, hey, storytelling, always storytelling groups. And I started doing it, but at the beginning I wasn't really, like that wasn't a habit for me. So on a four by six card I write, this is the story that I'm gonna tell, right? And I write a little bit of notes. And then I'd be like, okay, what's gonna be my one, uh, one lifestyle point, one mastery point that I'm gonna go through? Right, I would have it all down in there. Then I start writing down, if there was a client that, like, for instance, last session would say, my shoulder's bugging, and I'd be like, Terry, check on shoulder. Right? That would all be on a four by six card. Right? And there would be another client that would have like, maybe something really good that they did. Right? They deadlifted, you know, PR deadlifted a kettlebell in a circuit or something like that. And I'd write it down. 
And I'd come in, and I, now I'd have a plan. Like right before we start 10, 15 minutes, I used to, like the first three, four years, I'd trip out and be like at, at sessions so early because I was always had anxiety because I wanted to make sure it was, I was on time and like doing things right. But I'd come in, I'm like, hey, Terry, how's your shoulder doing? Did you do those exercises? Hey, before we get started, do this drill and that drill. And the thing is, they would just be like, this guy remembers this, right? My, I had some cheat codes, but nonetheless. And I did, I did this for years, and like, these are actually cards from like last week, because I was working on the presentation and working on some stuff at the gym. Right? I still have four by six cards in my pocket to this day. Right? I would come in prepared. Right? Now, if you want to be honest, on a serious note, how many of you guys, when you come into your semi-private sessions and your coaching sessions right now, have that level of preparation? I appreciate the honesty. But imagine, right, because life gets kind of like, you start building a business, you get more clients, a lot of things start happening, and then we start doing the simple things that make us great. Right, it's just like 16, 17 years into Kobe's career, everybody say this guy's like in, on a court doing hours and hours of basics. Basics, that's it. But, no, but the thing is, everybody knows what he's going to do, and yet you still can't stop him because he's that good at the basics, right? Now, today we have tech, so this is just from our Zen planner, right? I can pull up my phone, and I can look at who's in class. Now, we get new people all the time. I don't ever want to not know a person's name, so I'm, I'll look him up, and I'll go like, oh, okay, cool, that's, you know, that's Mark. Hey, Mark, what's going on? Mark, is my, Mark might have never met me because another one of my team members have signed him up. But they're like, damn, they know my name, right? The other thing that I can do is when I look up if there's some new people, I can do a little investigation. Go on Facebook, go on IG, text the team. Hey, who's new? Tell me a little bit more about them, right? I can do this, and the thing is that these little things when I come in make such a difference because if somebody goes somewhere else and they don't remember their name and they don't coach them up and they don't remember that their knee was a little feeling a little tweaky, right? Let alone telling stories and having things prepared, it just creates, it's the same thing as going to a restaurant, the waiter knowing exactly which drink you have, even though you've only been there one time. Like, the service is, like, spectacular. They're like, hey, how's little Timmy doing? You're like, shit, how do you even know I have a little Timmy, right? The point being is that, like, it takes a little extra work to create an absolutely extraordinary experience, right? Extraordinary. You do the extra to the ordinary. And it doesn't have to be a lot many times, okay? Now, this will, this will be good because for everybody that's been, uh, I want to go through a, a, a couple of things. This actually kind of goes for just about everything. But what's the DNA of a great group training session? Semi-private, small group. Yesterday, I did the breakdown of our program designed for small group. And I wanted to go through, like, some checkpoints. Now, the thing is, if you guys have teams, if you run this, you kind of want to create systems around this. So always start with a motivational message story. It doesn't even have to be long. Sometimes it could just be a frame, right, a frame. Guys, listen, today, I want to... There's a saying, details matter. So everything we do today in this training session, I'm going I'm to focus on the details, right? So that the standard of how you do things is up here. If I wake you up in the middle of the night at 3, you know, 3 a.m. and I'm like, all right, guys, we're going to do a deadlift. You're going to be like, all right, hinge back, chest chest tall, right? Like you'll do it right because that's the only way, thing that you know how to do. So can I, can I have everybody commit to like focusing on the details today? Yeah. Right. You guys too, right? Good. Great answer. Right? But the thing is, you, you engage with people, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or with a group. You get feedback. So then, every time throughout the session, when somebody's not as focused, you go, hey, listen, we said we're going to say details matter. Somebody's pulling you by the crown on the string, brace, rip that bell apart, right? And the thing is, you want to brainwash people in doing excellent things. So you always start with that. Then we have our dynamic warm-ups. We, we, we went through that a little bit. Next, you have the training, nutrition, lifestyle tip or mastery. There's always, the, the way I look at it like this, our, our members come to uh, Vigor about four times a week on average, right? Some more, some less, about four times a week. 52 weeks a year, let's say there's some vacations, but basically you're going to see them about 200 times a year. Now, if I give 200 lifestyle tips, reinforce them with stories that like connect to them, do you think that they will start having a different perspective around things? Yes. yes. Just like, what Jay was saying, and, like, and everybody will say it, right? Like, 
surround yourself with the right people because all, the environment triggers behavior. It triggers a way of thinking. So this is the same way. Like you end up messaging them, and it doesn't usually like, you know, just happen overnight. But at the end of the year, people will just start saying the things and living the things that basically you've instilled in them. But for that, you have to have a repetition, right? And you have to have a system for it, okay? From there, we go to a training session breakdown, just breaking down the session. Here's what we're gonna do. If this is bugging you, you're gonna do this. Hey, if you can't do this, you're gonna do it like this, right? Progressions, regressions, lateralizations. You gotta have that. From there is the training session. We'll, we'll touch on like what should you know, make up a great training session. Like I said, I love that you guys were part of, one, me doing a little bit of a, a small group, also Martin, to see that energy. Because some of you will probably go like, is it really possible to bring that type of energy every training session? I've been coaching for 16 years. 16 years, okay? If you ask some people, you know, that, that coached me 16 years ago, they tell you I was a lunatic, you know? And I'm still a lunatic, but just a lot more organized and kind of structured lunatic. My point being is, you can bring that in. Like, you can practice something to where it's the only thing you know, right? And look at, like I said, it's sports, athletes, other industries, where you go like, man, like this, this person, like even on his worst day, he's phenomenal. That's a practice, right? It's a mindset and a practice. After the training session, team huddle story. That's a really, really big thing, bringing people in. Like I said, whether the story's a little bit longer or shorter sometimes, we always bring it in, right? We're always like one, two, three, team. Everybody does it together. Because you're, like I said, you're building community, you're building teamwork, you're building camaraderie. From here, so these, these are the things like, please, please, don't like let these things fool you that because they're so simple, okay? Right? How many people come in early enough to set up like set up the training session, set up the music, what's the music that you want to play, right? What type of energy you want to have? Saying everybody names, everybody's name at least twice per session. That's a system, by the way. At least, not saying not more, right? Most beautiful thing in the world that you can hear is your own name. So at least twice. From there, anybody ever heard of general specific individual coaching? Okay, so general specific individual it's like this, if I'm going through a training session, I got a class of 20 people, I got a session of 20 people, okay? Everybody, like some people are doing kettlebell deadlifts, some people are doing push-ups, some people are doing TRX rows, some are doing goblet squats. A general cue is like, keep your spine tall, somebody's pulling you by a string. Now, in every one of those exercises, does that go? Yes, right, we want a tall, neutral, packed spine. So I'm gonna be going around, guys, tall spine, I'm pulling you by a string, brace that core for a punch. Right? They all need that in those exercises. Then I'm going to go, guys, for you going doing kettlebell deadlift, make sure you rip the bell apart. Rip the bell apart. Let me see logo on your chest. Okay, that's specific. And then I'm going to go to Jenny and go like, hey, Jenny, I'm just going to block your knees so your hips go back a little bit further. Hey, great job pushing your hips back. Boom. I'm going back to general. General, specific, individual. Okay? So that's how you coach group training. General, specific, individual. So I can be individually coaching like yesterday doing trap bar deadlifts that are a little bit more on the technical side, right? But I can still go like, hey, make sure you exhale while you're doing your thoracic rotations. I'm doing a specific cue. And then I can go right back to like, make sure your, your spine is tall. That's everybody, that's general. But what ends up happening is that I end up coaching the whole session and everybody, even if the person is right there in the corner and not right there with them, they're feeling coached. Right, I am, I'm generally coaching them, it goes for them. Now like I said, I have the kind of honor to go to a lot of places, a lot of gyms, and watch a lot of stuff, and a lot of times it's like, all right guys, let's go, three, two, one, ah. That's great, by the way, I do that too. Right, but you wanna do that doing general, specific, individual cueing. Like what, what made Vigor, I would say, known initially is like, when we did, at first, you know, now we call it team training, which was boot camps, but people will come out and go like, man, like, there's 25 people in a session, but I felt like Luke was always there. Sometimes in a creepy way, you know, like, oh, shit. But, but, it's, but the point being is, it was like, you know, how do you coach group training sessions, like one-on-one -on -one sessions, right? I wanted to figure that out, and this was part of it, right? I'm always coaching. Remember, ABC, always be coaching, right? And the other rule is, like, coach everybody twice individually. Now, we've had, I would say, Charity events with 120, 140 people, right? Some of them, you know, some of you guys have been there when we've done that. 
I know the Farouges went to, at the grand opening, we had like three classes of 100 people, right? Now, I would bet you, maybe I didn't hit it exactly, but I guarantee you I was pretty damn close to coaching everybody at least twice individually. 100 people in a session. Now, at the end of the session, like, I'm sweating bullets, right? But that's how you should be. Like, you should give your best, right? What did Martin say yesterday? Give your best. Like, when you lay your head down on a pillow, you're like, man, oh, man, I, empty, I, empty, I emptied my tank, right? That's what you got to do. Be early, stay late to connect to individuals. I've seen this a lot now in industry. Everybody's got somewhere to go. Everybody's got to get the fuck out of there to make their social media post, right? But then it's like people are there waiting to talk to you where you could coach them up a little bit, connect with them. Hey, how are you feeling after that? Man, it was better than last week. Man, great job. Like you did more rounds than you did last week. You're doing awesome. Spend 10 minutes with people. Be there 10, 15 minutes early doing that. Spend 10 minutes late. But now all of a sudden it starts becoming like, yeah, but like that's not an hour and I got to, uh, you know. Guys, like this is the difference between greatness and like leaving the industry. This is the difference between five, six years from now you make a certain amount of money, your business a certain way, or you're not. Because you're, you know what I mean? Because it's like, because you're like a little better than average. That, oh, that word average kills me. Okay? Demonstrate well, clearly, different fitness levels. Now, you might go like, duh, really. Think about presenting on stage. Think about communication. You could take two different people and go like, that was a shitty presentation, and then go, wow, that was phenomenal. They're both speaking words, but there's a different tonality. I can bring it up, and then I can bring it down. And I can tell a story. And I can go a little bit faster, or I can slow it down. But I'm, what am I doing? I'm demonstrating well. I'm clearly, I'm communicating. It's an art. Take improv. Like, Jay was the person that really got me into improv. I'd, I've had coaches for speaking. Hard. Like, I had a speech impediment as a kid. Right? Like, you had to work it. I had to practice to work it out. So just remember, like, these are skill sets that any one of you can improve, okay? It's not some magical shit that's like, oh, that guy was made for it. No, you can improve that. Involve clients, structure interaction time. All right, hey, Sharda, come up. We're going to show this drill. You were doing it excellent last week. Let's go, right? Pulling people out, like, in between the session, during the breaks, cracking jokes that are individual to that person. Four by six cards, be prepared for it. Right? We haven't touched on anything else. This is just like the art of training, the art of coaching. Reading body language to know who, you know, how to connect and coach. Sometimes some people are down. Come up, give them a high five, give them a hug. Right? Some people have a different energy, and you might be like, yo, get your fucking shit together. Right? <laughs> but seriously, if you, have, if you understand that person, like they're a former athlete, they, and they're like, man, you, all right, you're right, Luca, let's go. Right? There's people I talk to like that, and there's people I'll be like, hey, listen, just, you know, push your butt back a little bit more. That's individual. But that people like really, really connect to that. And you can do that in large group settings. And then note for personal feedback after the session and questions. It's little stuff. So you know, if I go back to, like I said, that like, little Zen Planner app, who was in the class? How easy is it to take three minutes and go like, great work today. I saw you lifting a heavier belt than last week. Proud of you. What's that, 20 seconds, 15 seconds? You got 10, 12 clients in a class, okay, it's gonna take you two minutes to send everybody a personal note. Maybe it doesn't even have to be everybody, right? But like, shine a light on positive things. Shine a light on things that they did great. Guess what's gonna happen? They're gonna be like, damn, like, thank you so much. Part of the experience, right? Obviously, the art of the high five, what you'll notice, it's actually a tutorial how to do it, by the way. <laughs> right? Look at the elbow, look at the elbow. It's always like, if you do it, like, look at the album. I'm telling you, it's, it's magical. But the point being, too, is that, like, everybody, like, for instance, at the gym, I have some type of, you know, some, some people have high pipes, some it's daps, some it's a hug, some it's like, you got a whole thing that you do, right? But, the, like, I will not leave the gym or enter the gym without pretty much, you know, most, like, vast, vast, vast majority of the time without dapping everybody, right? Or saying hi to everybody. Those, like, those are little things that, like, make a big, big difference. You know, people have literally, like, pointed it out to me. Like, do you always come in and just go around the gym and dap everybody? Like, yep, absolutely. Right? And, like, wow, that's kind of weird. It's great weird, right? Things like PR bells, right? TFW started that. Like, we have a PR bell. So, I mean, literally just two days ago, actually, my, my I would say my mom, 
got a deadlift PR, and she ripped the bell off. So she was very excited, <laughs> obviously. We got to get a new one. But point being is that, like, it, those are, because you guys ever heard of an emotional anchor? So an emotional anchor is like, for instance, if I see Farouge, I have an emotional anchor, right? Because he's always berating me, so I kind of get anxiety a little bit when I see him. Uh, on a serious note, though, always excited. But when somebody comes to your gym, okay, so they're new, and you're always, for instance, right, you had a shitty day, your cat died possibly, hopefully not, but let's say it died, so you're down. You don't want to be the person that's like, hey, what's up? Or you go like, hey, Jenny, what's going on? I'm so excited to see you, right, just good energy. Now, if you do that 30 times in a row, you know what's going to happen? There's going to be an anchoring to your gym and to you, and it's going to be positive, right? Because then they come and other members are like, hey, what's going on, Jenny? So good to have you back. Now they anchor a feeling to your community so that when they open a the door, they walk in. They don't even need a high five anymore. They just have a good feeling. Okay, PR bells. Like, we'll t go ring the bell. PR. Oh, shit. Ding, 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 ding. Everybody goes, yeah. Right, nobody does that at their fucking work. Kids don't do that at home. Yeah, mom made breakfast. Don't give a shit. Throw that shit on the ground. I want something else. Right, but the thing is, is like, they, the, the point is that, like, you can create this experience they don't get anywhere else, and it makes them feel so good, and they will anchor that feeling. Okay, and it's like this is, you can do that, meaning you can create that. Now, there's, I'm a geek. Like, if you guys know me, like, I read probably too much, I study too much, and so I try to, like, find things that connect to coaching and how we do things. So there's a book called The Power of Moments by Chip and Dan Heat, and without going into, like, too much of what's in there, I'm going to bring up just one point that you should remember because it's so powerful, okay? People remember two moments in an experience. Two moments, only two, right? So if you go to Disney World, you're going to remember two things. You're going to remember the peak or the low, right? So the best part or the shittiest part of that experience, and you're going to remember the ending, okay? You're going to remember the ending, like literally the last little part of it. So imagine you're doing something for hours and hours, but the thing that really sticks with you emotionally in your mind is the peak, the low, and the ending. Okay, that means that, now sometimes we can't affect the peak and the low, so we're not even gonna like talk about that too much. But the ending, we can influence the ending, okay? And there's so many studies done that like, on customer experience things that like, if the last part, the last minutes of an experience were made great and good and made people to feel good, when they did the survey, that person would say that the ex whole experience was good, okay? So imagine that. Let's say same hour session, but the ending was kind of like, uh, or same hour session, last three minutes are great. Once surveys are done, we're talking about two to three points or four points out of 10 higher for that great ending. Now, do you think it would be smart to spend some time thinking about how you f end things? Hell the fuck yes, right? Training sessions, semi-private sessions, team meetings, name it in your business. Why do we have a huddle at the end of a team training? Why do we bring it in, right? Why do we go one, two, three, team, and everybody gets high five, and then right? Because it's the ending, and I can basically end it on a high, and now that's what people remember the most. So once again, where in your business and in your life, in your life too, I'm veering off, date night, whatever else it may be, right? How can you end things on a phenomenal note so that people remember that, right? Because that's what happens. That's what happens. Now, everything that I said, right, is a what, right? Hey, do this, do this, do this. Everything is a what. But the big thing is like, how do you do this? And I feel that like your life will be better if you get, I would say, so curious and invested in the process that you start studying little shit like that. Like, okay, cool, how can I, because that's what I would do. Like I would learn something about speaking or storytelling or we do some improv stuff and I'm like, oh man, that's dope. And then the next day, I'm gonna use it with somebody on my team. I'm gonna use it with like a, a team training session, a group session. I might create some content around, like I'm gonna use it. Because that's how I get good at the how. 
right? Because we're very, very good right now with like all this like information being thrown at us. And you're like, oh, this shit is great. But you don't, but then you don't go and master these skills, right? And you guys have heard the law of the slight edge, okay? This is what I see in the industry a lot. You've been in it for a couple years, maybe five. You know, you start getting a little burnt out. And it's like, it's like an airplane on a runway that's like a foot to the left. Big jet, right? One foot to the left. Do you, do you see that? It's a massive jet. It's one foot to the left. Does anybody see that? No, nah, like nobody notices that. But when that jet is flying for 10 hours, that foot makes it land in a different city or state, okay? And this is how this works. I was super riled up for two to three years coaching, and then, you know, I got a little bit complacent. So instead of coming 15 minutes early, I started coming in 10 minutes earlier. And then instead of my energy being like, yeah, come on, let's go, it was like, all right, guys, all right, ready, ready? All right, cool, three, two, one, go. And then slowly, you start, you don't even feel it. It's not a big enough difference, right? Slowly, like two years later, you're just not the same coach. Now, the great thing about this is you can do the exact opposite, which is just slowly you keep getting better at your skill set. You study it for 15 minutes a day. Hey, listen, today when I come in, I'm going to tell this story. I'm going to try to go high and low in my tonality. I'm going to try to bring a little more energy. Put it on your note card. And then every day you practice that, and you practice that, and you practice that. And right away, you know, it's not that you're not the greatest of all time, but three, four, five, six months later, people start going like, oh, man, like, I'm really loving, like, your energy's gotten better. I love when you tell the stories like that. I love how you do this. And then two years later, all of a sudden, you got packed classes. Or a year later, referrals. You can't take any more people in. That's how it happens. It's not what you do, it's how you do it. Now, at the end of the day, there has, you also have to understand, and like I said, Jay will talk about this, I talk about it all the time, that their personality is such a big factor, and you have to entertain. If I'm, if I'm here on stage and I'm just like, I want you guys to do, and I'm just like flat as hell, do this, coach twice individually, da, da, da. and it might be great information, but you're not even gonna, you're not gonna take it in because I'm not entertaining you, I'm not engaging with your senses, I'm not engaging with your emotions, right? I'm not storytelling to where it connects to you. So you have to be entertaining. And in this industry, let's be real too, like how many people you know, you can, you can coach a deadlift. I mean, a lot of people can coach a deadlift great. So does that mean that everybody coaches a deadlift just the same way and we educate? No, right? We entertain, right? We have our own voice, and that's why you have to develop your voice, because everybody has it, but you have to develop it. Right? You have to develop these skill sets. Otherwise, you become lukewarm, okay? So as I'm talking about this, hopefully now this is kind of like triggering certain things. Because if you're doing these things right, guess what's going to happen? People will talk about you and start sharing stuff about you. Okay, now that doesn't mean you're going to have better word of mouth, you have better referrals, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't have referral strategies, right? It shouldn't mean that you shouldn't have things in place that you do that accelerate everything. So here's just a couple. I said I want, I want to get practical stuff here, okay? At the point, this is, these are simple things, I promise, you, I promise you this, okay? Anybody that has a coaching business, that has a gym, that, honestly, even for online, okay? Do some of this, and in the next 30 days, you'll text me and go like, hey, I just paid for the event 10 times over, maybe more, okay? So anytime you sell anything, right? Our main thing is a 30-day results in advance program. It's basically a trial, right? It's a paid trial at the gym. As soon as somebody signs up for it, you should always say this. Okay, by the way, we do allow you to bring a friend or family to your first training session. Who would you like to bring? Simple. Okay. Anybody, anybody here get 10, uh, 10 trials leads per month in their business? Right? Five, six, doesn't matter. Take the number. Let's say, let's say eight. Right? 12 times eight is what? 96. Okay? 96. So if 96 times you ask this question like a champion, right, on 96, let's lowball the shit out of this and say, let's lowball it, okay? Let's say you get 35 people to take you up on it. So not, not even a third, okay? 35 people take you up on it. Remember, a referral is five to six times better of a lead than a paid lead that you've got through marketing.
Okay, so if you spend whatever amount of money you did on ads, this, that, the other, a referral is five to six times better. Because your friend is already going there, right? So now you have 35 people to come in, and let's lowball the shit out of this too, and say only 20 of those 35 end up joining. Okay, if they spend 300 bucks a month, 20 times 300, that's $6,000, times a year, that's $72,000. Anybody want 72K? If I put it right here, everybody's like, ah, right? But the thing is, like, that's what you're doing. You're leaving it on the table. With these simple things, you just don't, you just don't do them. And it's so simple that like, I, I can admit that like, we have to keep going over this with the team as well. I have to, you know what I mean? Like, hey, did you do that? Did you, right? It's, it has to be reminded, it has to be embedded. One damn simple question. Now, here's what's so cool about it. When their friend signs up, what do you think you tell them? By the way, we do allow you to bring a friend to your first training session, right? It's a snowball. Right, it's basic little things. Also, another one. If you go to fitnessgiftcards.com, um, a good friend of ours, Curtis Mock, used to own that site, and I think he sold it, but it's still great. VIP cards, they look like, they look like credit cards. Right? Uh, we would do like these black, vigor ground cards. Some people would put a value on it. I just try to make them look like American Express, because you can put the numbers on it so it looks like a credit card. Right? So in the first 30 days, what you do is you listen to, so let's say, Mark comes in, right? Mark comes in, he wants to lose 25 pounds, his back hurts, that's why he's there. And in the first 25 days, he's like, man, like, this is really bugging me because I have a hard time golfing, right? I, I golf with this guy, Jerry, and it's like he keeps beating me, right? Now, the thing is, Jerry also has a messed up shoulder, but he still keeps beating me. So now I'm hearing that, hmm, Jerry plays golf with him, messed up shoulder, also needs to lose weight. About two weeks into the, into the trial, I go to Mark and I go, listen, hey, I know you mentioned that like, you know, Jerry's got some issues with his shoulder and you know, he's also trying to lose weight and you guys golf together. Man, here's, like, here's a VIP card and like, I'll pay for him to come in for the 30 days and train with us in the results and advanced program, right? And you give it to him, that's your gift from you, okay? Now here's a couple of things that I did. It wasn't random, hey, give this card to someone. That, that doesn't work very well. But give this card to this person that you mentioned that matters, that works. And same thing, like you're going to get one out of two, one out of three people to take you up on it. But it's the, it's the thing is like, sure, they didn't pay for the trial. But guess what? That's the best lead you could ever get, right? So now look at that. We're, we're at point number two, right? We're at point number two. And if you're executing this, like literally if you got 10 leads, those 10 leads like might turn into 14, 15, 16 leads all of a sudden. And you just made an effort, you didn't spend any extra money. Number three, at the end of class, just saying, like, remember, we just did a phenomenal training session. It was a fucking show, right? Everybody's on a high, like, whoa. You go, hey, we need more awesome people just like you. Like, who's a friend or family member that would benefit from the results and experience in this community? Okay, okay hey, you know what? Text me who you're bringing next time. And the thing is, maybe it'll be just one person that does it. Maybe it'll be two, maybe it'll be zero. But when you do it every time in every session, like throughout the year, you're going to get 30, 40, 50 more people to try it out. And if you put on the show that you put on that we talked about, guess what? You're going to have more clients. Guess, I, already, I haven't even touched Instagram yet. I haven't even, like, right? This is all per, person to person, skin to skin. Very simple. Now, we have, you guys saw, we have a Fit Bar cafe inside of um, our building. Like, this is a thing that actually we're working on right now. But if anybody comes back to get another smoothie, going, by the way, did you know that you get three VIP workouts with Vigor as a return customer? Most people will be like, oh, no, I didn't know that. Would you like to take advantage of that? Yeah, okay, great. Let me get your text, uh, cell phone number. A coach will text you. Right? It's basically McDonald's. Do you want fries with that? Right? Do you want fries with that? Now, who, do you, you're like, oh, but I don't have a smoothie bar in my building. Does it, like, how many different things could you do this with? Could it be the smoothie bar next door? Right? Could it be a... A basically massage service, could, what could it be, right? How can you collaborate on those? That's very, very, very simple, okay? Now, this one's a little bit more aggressive, but I learned this quite a, like, quite a while ago. If you, if you do it with the right person, it works. Hey, Jerry, you're one of the only few people that haven't referred anyone here. What's up with that? That's work, by the way. You just got to know, like, you just got to know it's the right person. You can poke, poke. They'll be like, right? If it's, a, if it's an A-type personality, they'll be like, well, shit, man, come on, man, like, you don't know anybody that's gonna, like, 
benefit from this? I'm gonna bring my friend uh, Jason. Okay, cool, right? Basic stuff like bring a friend a day, week, right? Even if you do one a month, bring it, like, these are like, listen, and you might be like, oh yeah, of course, duh, I, duh. Do you do it? And do you do it excellent? And do you do it consistently? Doing sessions for teams of players, meaning like, if you're training a lacrosse kid, hey, bring in a team, we're gonna do a mobility session, we're gonna do a performance session. Right? I used to do, like I said, these chaos speed training camps all over Seattle, and it, that, that's literally how it was. We'd, knew, we'd know a player, the player would go to coach and be like, man, like, my coach is phenomenal at the speed training stuff. And they'd be like, all right, cool, bring him in. And I trained 70 kids, and at the end, I mean, we, we had contracts with schools for speed because of it, or we'd get a number of kids that would go like, man, I want that training. Right? But it all, and, and it's like, you can either bring them into the facility or you can go there. And number one, this is, I mean, last, last time that we did a live event, I spoke on charity events. I could speak on charity events every single event that I put on, and it probably wouldn't be enough, right? Putting on charity, charity events, lo connecting to local charities, charities and organizations, giving back to the community is one of the greatest things that you can do. Um, you know, we, like I said, what was very challenging for me personally is when COVID happened, is to not to be able to put on these events live. We actually went and live streamed them. Uh, and in the first six weeks when we did that, we raised $17,000 live streaming. I'm, I'm gonna actually show you guys some of the stuff that we did that every one of you can do, by the way, right? We were just like, we're not stopping charity boot camps. Saturday at 9 a.m., boom, we're gonna live stream it, come to the Vigor page. We got, th I mean, thousands and thousands of followers. We raised tons of money. Um, you know, our, the brand grew. But I love the live stuff. So up to date, so since now 13 plus years now, we've done a charity boot camp every single Saturday at 9 a.m. You know, without going into how it all started, we've raised hundreds of thousands of dollars, tons of food, tons of clothes. Um, you know, we've helped probably close to 200 charities with that. But guess what we would do? It was don donation based, right? Drop in, do a minimum $10 donation, and get, we'll have people bring their friends. So if we had like, for instance, for Cancer Walk, we have a lot of members that are parts of different uh, groups and teams. I'm like, hey, listen, I'll, all the money will go to your, or your, like your team. They bring in 40 friends, right? They're like, what? Tell all their friends. If we come, we're gonna raise money for our team. Bring in 40 friends. And then you put on a fucking show, and then people are like, yo, I, what the hell just happened? I, I wanna be part of this gym, right? Now, I'm not saying do it every Saturday like we did, but maybe you could start doing it every month, every two, right? In the big events, we'd, put, we'd bring in DJs, food, vendors. I mean, we've had, like, in, like I said, some of you have seen this. We've had 140, 150, 160 people in one training session live, right? Raise, I mean, we've raised as much as like seven, $8,000 in one session. So that, that is, guess what that is? That's referrals, because people start, they don't want to miss it. They're like, man, these guys, these guys bring in like live DJs and there's food for free and we got raffles and they're giving away shit, right? There, uh, later, they, later on, we'll, Kaiso will be here. We did one many years ago and that was a huge success for Seattle Children's for, uh, for a specific department. And same thing, we're giving away Beats by Dre stuff, all, all donated. Remember guys, you can, you can do all of this. It's just effort, it's just effort. But if you ever heard about this, right? What's difficult is scarce and what's scarce is valuable. Right? If it's easy to do, everybody can do it. So if everybody can do it, then it's not very valuable. Right? Shoot a quality video every day. Not everybody can do it. Write a blog post. Not everybody can do it. All the time, consistently, right? So this, this, I mean, this slide right here, legit, the difference is going to be like, who's going to go and do it? Go and do it 30 days from now. Send me, I don't know, 15% commission. I won't go too hard on you, right, on what you make. Just 15%. Right, this, I mean, this right here, and I know that some people left. Like, this was, I think, uh, every, every holiday we do a charity event. So Thanksgiving, uh, Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve, Labor Day, uh, Fourth of July, like, you name it, like, we always do it. And then every Saturday, right? But that's 90 people right there, and a bunch of them already left. The energy, like, we blast the music. The coaching is nuts. Everybody's sweating, high-fiving, smiling. I mean, the energy is like, I'm getting tingles right now thinking about it. And when people leave your gym like that, it's different. Like, it's like it's different. And then they go somewhere else, and it's like, ugh, it wasn't like that, right? One of the things to do when milestones are hit, right? So if a client hits a milestone, 
And here's the thing, like your clients usually don't have, I would say, not necessarily have the best, uh, like, hey, what should I write, what should I do? But let's say you had a, you had a client like, yo, listen, I want to deadlift 300 pounds and I want to lose, uh, lose 20 pounds and deadlift 300 pounds. That's my, my goals. Once they hit the goal, they're going to be pumped. Like, they're like, fucking, I hit my goal, my coach helped me get there. Right? And you go like, hey, listen, like, I'd love for you to, like, refer some people that, like, also want to achieve these same goals or, like, that would benefit from the coaching that we have. And then you give them a template. Like, this is a text, by the way. Hey, I want to introduce you to my friend, Coach Luca Hosevar. He's helped me fill in the blank, right? And I know he could help you. Luca, me, you know, Jenny. Insert two lines in the background. I know, I know who would benefit from working with Luca because I can help with, also, Luca would love to send you a copy of his ebook. Insert title. So that way, like, you can get them on the list if they don't want to, like, at that point in time, come in and coach. This is basic. I mean, you guys got 20 clients right now, 30 clients right now, 100, 200, 150, whatever it is. If they hit some type of goal, you could give them that. You'd probably get 15 to 20 new clients in the next two months. Who's going to do it? Who's going to do it? Take a picture. Use it. Right? All right. I'm going to run, like, hour and a half should be enough usually for me, but shit. All right, I got a lot to say, damn it. So customer experience, I, I want to touch on this because customer experience is, is, notice, like we talked about coaching, right? We talked about coaching and referral. So number one, do a phenomenal job, right? Be a fucking rock star when you coach. Do the things that we just went over. Then have a system for referrals, right? If you do those two things, a lot of great things start happening. And then customer experience, a superpower, okay? It's one of the worst things for most business in America. Matter of fact, here's a statistic. It's not even in the slides. When they did a survey of thousands of companies and they asked the company, do you, like, how many people do you think that uh, will say that you, like, our customer service is great? And the company would say 80%. 80% were like, our customer service is great, okay? Then they went to the customers. What percentage of customers do you think that they thought the company was great? Close, eight. Eight. So 8%. So 80% were like, yeah, man, like our customer experience is fucking dope. 8% were like, yeah, 8%. 10 times less. Less than one out of 10 people thought the customer experience was good. Right? So that means for everybody sitting in here, I hate to break it to you. Most of you think your shit's good, but it stinks. All right? Great thing is you can fix it. Okay, now, I want to show you, like I said, I study, I study all types of businesses. Like I... I don't just study the fitness industry. I study everything. Wherever I can learn things from, I'm going to learn it from. Now, who, like, I actually just had to go to a dentist because one of my crowns fell out, and I nearly ninja kicked him for it. But do, does anybody here get super excited about going to the dentist? No, right? It's cringeworthy. Oh, one guy. All right. Well, good, good. I thought there's also some deeper things there that we might have to discuss later, but that's cool. That's cool. So it's like you don't get excited about going to the dentist, okay? And there's a dentist in Colorado, okay? We'll, we'll, we'll get to it. I want to show you kind of the customer experience. And this, I promise you that you'll get a lot out of this, okay? But this is important. Customer experience is going to become a way that companies differentiate in the future. And forget about the future now, okay? We all have websites, similar process, sales process. But how a customer interacts with your brand following the sale is becoming more and more important, right? Because a lot of times it's like, oh, we got the sale, great. And now I don't really give a shit, right? Revenue, woo. But this is like one of the most important things. So you went to the dentist. What did you expect? Right, this is Dr. McCann, right? So it's like I said, it's, it's a, a specific business that was also in, in one of the case studies that I learned about in uh, Never Lose a Customer Again. But you didn't expect this, right? Warm, caring, concerned receptions answered on the first ring, on the first ring, right? So this is their, this is their system, right? They answer on the first ring. It was an emergency appointment. Two hours later, we need to get you in as quick as possible. Sounds you're in a great deal of pain. We want to resolve that right away. Now, I will tell you straight up that a dentist that I called, and it was an emergency, they said, we can get you in next week. I was like, listen, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a great deal of pain, and I do not want to start popping pain pills. But this is, a seri like, this is seriously what happened. Right? I was like, you do understand, like, I'm in insane amounts of pain. Like, okay, let's see if we can get you in a little bit earlier, like in four days. <laughs> I'm like, okay. They were like, no, this is an emergency. We're going to move things around for you. We're going to get you as quick as possible. We want to resolve it. Right? Instantly send a welcome email with, uh, 
with a link to dental forms online, five minutes done, they don't ever have to do it again. So it's a one-time thing. Do it, do it, don't have to do it again. Walk into the office, hey, Joey, how are you feeling? Right? How does she recognize me if she's never seen me? After learning, he must get a crown and have a lot of questions. Worry, Dr. McCain answered all questions thoroughly, patiently, and gently, anticipating cares and concerns of the process. Right? They told you exactly what's going to happen. This is key, expectations. You're going to be here for an hour and a half, but you'll never have to come back to check with us again. We'll take a digital impression area, we'll construct a new tooth, we'll 3D mill it, then insert it, proper fit, we'll make sure everything's working well. Right? To, like to the T, they're explaining what you're going to get. I'm, I want you to think about this because it's, are you doing this in your business? Right? Remember that uncertainty creates anxiety. So when people come in and don't know what's going to happen in your business and in your session and in your orientation and in, 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 they're going to get anxious. Okay? They offer payments plans, in-house insurance options, other ways to reduce costs of dental emergency. Electronic consent form was signed. I pulled it up. I signed it real quick. Didn't have to do paperwork, anything. The thorough procedure was pleasant. Conversation was easy. Yes, no questions. Trained professional. Right? They, they anticipated needs. Two hours later, they called. Hey, we just wanted to call because we're, uh, we're numbing agents are going to kind of fall off right now. Do you need any more? They did, he, he didn't have to call. They called him. Right? Did you pick up your prescription? 24 hours later, they checked in again. Okay? So just a little chart. All right, typical dentist. Next available appointment, prioritize emergencies, returning patients. Paperwork, poor photocopy on a clipboard, mobile-friendly form. Duration. Right now, here's the thing. I, I put this up here for you because it's, sometimes it's very good to look at an, a lateral business, like a business outside of your scope that you understand that you go to, and you go like, yeah, if I went to this instead of this, man, I would like 100% I'd keep coming back and I'd tell everybody about it. And if you go on Facebook, I, I, I do a little, I, I do the, I would say, creepy stuff, and then I went on their Facebook page and looked at all the shit. And it's nuts. Like, their referrals are crazy. Somebody posted, like, hey, what's a recommendation for a doctor in Denver? And it was, like, 20 people. So this is a random person. 20 people recommended the same doctor. Right? And it wasn't a marketing strategy. It was just that they do this like this, and everybody refers them. Customer experience. It can be a superpower, guys. It can be a superpower. Right? So his commitment... And by the way, if, if, another phenomenal, like I said, book that's very practical from Joey Coleman is, is called Never Lose a Customer Again. Right? And, it, and it talks a lot. It goes deep into this. But it's, it's not a theoretical book. It's very practical. Right? Very practical. Right? But his commitment to the excellence, to the customer experience, and if you guys do that in your business, and it doesn't have to be you know, 20 different things. It's just doing a couple of things and really differentiating yourself. Okay, so this guy went there too. Look at that. Stop murdering people. Great. All right, so customer experience will become a way companies can differentiate in the future. It just will be. All right, I think websites are important. I think sales processes are important. But this is becoming more and more important. Right? And like I said, if you, if you study customer experience in the a, in a US, throughout companies, it's horrific. Horrific. Right, between banks, mobile providers. You know the reason that you don't leave? Like everybody, you know, was like, you know how many times I've heard somebody go, I gotta get away from this fucking cell phone company. Oh, why don't you do it? Oh, it's just such a hassle, right? So it's so horrible, you just don't want to leave because it's a hassle changing it up. That's a shitty experience. That's not something that wanna, you know, that you wanna be like, hey, who are you with? Uh, Verizon. You like them? Nah, they fucking suck. Why don't you go somewhere else? Ah, oh, it's a hassle going somewhere else. Oh, great, let me sign up with Verizon right now, right? <laughs> right so, Couple, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to talk about two different things, right? Two, two different things that I think you guys can influence significantly that will basically really, really help with your business. The starting points. So one thing that people don't think about customer experience is point number one is access. And that's literally your marketing and sales. So your customer experience starts with marketing and sales. Because people will look at your stuff and they get an experience, right? You go to a bigger ground, like for instance, Facebook page, I'm constantly posting content valuable things that people can use, right? And so, so now the customer is like, man, like I've never been to this gym, but I watch the stories, like, man, energy looks great. They're constantly putting out content that's helping me. That's an experience, right? Now, you can create that through email. You can create it through physical mail, which I still is like, once things go away from one thing, it's an opportunity, right? Handwritten notes, handwritten letters to people, you know, stop doing them. It's, 
It means the world to people. Obviously, digital experience, handshake. Right? I always say, like, in Renton, like, I, you know, I go around and shake hands and kiss babies. Go to every restaurant, you know, who, who went to Whistle Stop Cafe? There's a Lucas special, right? There's a Lucas special everywhere, right? Because I go there and I spend my money and I shake hands and I'm always there, right? And we'll call restaurants and they're like, oh, we don't have a table for eight. And they're like, oh, but it's for Luca. Okay, cool, we got a table for 12, right? Be shake hands and kiss babies. And those restaurant owners go like, oh man, you should go to that gym, okay? YouTube gifts, like you can, you know you can gift people like, you know how many times I've bought a smoothie to somebody is like, we're going around the gym, and they're like, oh man, I know there's a gym there. And we do a walkthrough, I talk to them about what we do. And I'm like, hey, guys, get him a PP&J smoothie. And they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, you'll love this smoothie. And I buy it for him. And they're just like walking out like, thanks so much. Like, <laughs> like waiting for something. And I'm like, no, have a great day. Right? Does, is that person going to basically come back and check it out? Or, yeah. Customer experience. Okay? We've done seminars, so many live seminars at the gym. I'm talking about nutrition, mobility, mobility workshops. We'll record it. We'll give it away to people for free. We'll put it on our social media. Here's an hour and a half of nutrition. Right? So we'll do the seminar. You can come to it, but then we'll record it, and I'll give it. And there's, I mean, legitimately hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of stuff that we've given away. That is part one of customer experience. Okay? Whether you have a podcast, like I said, YouTube. I didn't even post everything, but creation, right? Remember, who here wants, all right, raise your hand. Do you want to be an authority? Raise your hands if you want to be an authority. All right, cool. There is no authority without author. Author. You have to author things. You have to write. You have to create. You have to video. You have to write. You have to author things to become an authority. Like I said, I'm a sneak, like with our coaching clients, I'll like go on their shit and be like, um, I don't see anything. I didn't see a new email. I didn't see a new blog. I don't see any new videos. I don't see... You're not authoring things, so you can't become an authority, okay? Even things like a website. I spent, like, tons and tons of time on this, right? When people come and, like, very clear, we help clients build better bodies so they can write better stories to their life. You know, it's based on story brand. I did a lot, a lot of story brand with Donald Miller, did all the workshops, did the whole shebang, and built the site based on this. But when somebody comes to this, it's very clear, okay? So if they come to another site versus this site, it's very clear. And I'll, and I'll touch on this a little bit later. But when we changed our website, we went from getting six to seven leads per month to over 20, right? So we tripled our leads. Now, that means that, like, because the website was done right, and there's, look, I could go for a week on, like, what to do with this stuff, right? But you can see, green button, get started. What do I do, need to do next? Right, get a custom nutrition fitness roadmap. Get expert coaching, guidance, and support. Transform your body for good. If you want to watch a video, we have a brand video, okay? Putting effort in one time into something now is yielding three times the amount of leads per year while we sleep. Probably a good idea to do, but this is also part of customer experience. I literally, this morning, we got a trial, right? And they said, I went on your website. I really think I wanna work with you guys because you explain what you do and we need individualized help, okay? Great website, great message, exactly what you're gonna get, better customer experience. So it starts with your marketing and with your sales. Don't forget that, because you're like, oh yeah, once a person comes in. Yeah, but how do they come in? People are already judging you and assessing you. People don't call anymore now. They look at all your shit, and then they make a decision. Right? About seven years ago, people would need five points of information to make a decision. Now it's 28, because there's so much information. Right? So if you're creating stuff, they're seeing it often, now they're hitting you up. They're not calling like, hey, uh, I'm interested in your personal training program. Nobody does that anymore. Very few, and you guys know that, right? It's usually an email, it's a DM, it's a text, okay? So if I can give you another, like I said, another like quick hitter for your website. If your website above the fold is when I get onto your, like on your phone or on your desktop, right? What I see is called above the fold. You need to answer three things above the fold on your website. What do you offer? What do we offer? We help our clients change their bodies so they can change the stories to their life, okay? Number two, how will it make life better? You guys saw those three points at the bottom. Okay, what do I need to do next? Get started, green button, very clear, okay? Once again, every single one of these points I'm talking about, if you implement them, it'll change your business. Now, change in the sense like, hey, instead of getting three leads, if you get six, that's a fucking big difference. 
Also, these are all videos, and you can go on YouTube and find this. It's all free. It's not like, right? On the top left, Vigor Ground brand story. We did, we did quite a bit of, uh, I would say, uh, time, energy, money investment on it. It's a two-minute video. It's very well done, but it's like it tells the story of our brand, right? Uh, it's gone very, like, on, not on YouTube as much, but it's gone very viral on Facebook. Uh, a lot of people have hit us up and go, I chose to hit you up because I saw the brand story. I do think everybody should have a brand story. Number two, how it all works. I just, put, I just put, created a video, and literally on a whiteboard, I explain exactly what happens when you contact us, how our orientation runs, how our trial runs, what you get to the T. Right? You're just telling people exactly what you do and how you're going to do it and how you're going to help them and exactly what's going to happen. Remember that previous Dr. McCampos, right? They told you exactly what's going to happen, so the anxiety goes away. Oh. Yeah, and so if, for instance, if you're in pain or if, you have, if you're a starter in fitness, we do this. We work with a lot of people just like that. Number three, that's a trial video that we use. Basically, it's just me going, hey, what's going on? It's Coach Luca from Big Round Fitness and Performance. Hey, first of all, let me introduce you to Tosh, our director of WOW. Tosh said, what's up? I walk around the gym. I'm like, hey, here's Fitbar. People are training in the back. They see exactly what's going on. Hey, this is our team training going on. This is our semi-private personal training. If you sign up with us for a trial and you don't like it, we'll give you your money back. You don't have to fill out any forms. I'll Venmo you the damn money. Right? Like, I'm telling them and showing them. Are you telling and showing exactly what your business is like? All you got to do, like, you could pull out your phone and be like, here you go. Film me. All right, guys, what's going on? That's it. Like, that video's got, I don't know how I many, like, 70, 80,000 views when we posted it. We ran some ads to it, but not even that much. Right, people just want to see, oh, cool. That's a dope gym. Oh, wow, that sounds like a good, let me reach out to them. Simple things, guys. No, like, nobody needs any crazy stuff to do this. Everybody can pull up their phone, give it to a team member, do it themselves. Nothing crazy. Right, just a couple of things, guys, on here. I know there's a lot of questions, but whatever pops out at you, think about it, okay? When prospects review your marketing materials, do they get a good idea of what experience is going to be like right, before they become a client? It's a question for you. You know, do they? Like, th think about that. Because sometimes it can be, you know, it, it can actually be a punch in the gut. Be like, man, no, no, like my business, I have no idea. How long does a typical prospect assess your product before becoming a customer? You can find that out a lot of times. My number one question when I talk to somebody is, hey, what made you decide to reach out to us? How did you find out about us? And then you write it down. I always write it down. Oh, man, I watched, I saw your video. Your video keeps popping up. I saw an ad. My friend told me about you. I forgot about it. And then I saw an ad, right? So you start learning about when they start seeing it, OK? And then it's like, hey, does your sales team, so sales team in our situation really is just coaches, right? Do you put down what they want and need, right? And do they share those things with the people that are responsible? My, my biggest thing for you guys here is that, like, you assess that you assess your customer experience and the flow of how things are going on and improve it. Right? You don't have to answer every single one of these questions, right? Because, right? But they're important. You reframe the prospect expectations to be in alignment with your business, right? But the main thing is, guys, write out exactly every single step that you currently have in your business when somebody comes in. And then ask yourself honestly, like, is that good? Maybe it sucks, right? Like Dave Tay has. He says, shit, suck, good, great, you know? Are you in a shit stage? You might be, and that's, you know, if, if you are, hey, at least you're checking in with reality. Let's get it from shit to suck. <laughs> Let's preferably get it to great. But my point being is, like, how do you know something if you don't assess it? You don't. You have to assess it, right? So then it's, these are just some tools. How can you basically use your in-person interactions during the space to give a prospect a taste of what it'll be like to interact with you as a customer? I will say, for us, we've been using it now for eight years. The 30-day trial, like I said, we call it the results in advance program, I have found is the most effective thing. It's a paid 30 days, OK? Now, it's a risk-free. We tell them, like, listen, if you think that we suck seven to 10 days in, just let us know. We'll give you money back. We'll refer you somewhere else. Like, but they get everything. They get team training, semi-private coaching, nutrition coaching. Essentially, we call it results in advance because you don't have any commitment until the end, and then if you choose that we're great for you, you move forward, right? And I would, I would highly encourage, and this will be part of the things that we do, the offers and the front-end offers that we help our, our business coaching clients make, right, so that they work for them, because then it works. It's like, 
I haven't been changing it. Like, it's been working for eight, nine years. We've just made it better, right? But think about, like, that last question, right? What could you do to wow them? What presence could you do? So if we get a trial, they get a handwritten uh, uh, thank you note, and then they get a gift card for Fitbar, and then once they sign up, the admit phase, right? This is when they admit they have a problem and they, believe, uh, and they think that your company is the right company, and they sign up with you, right? So one of the things that we do, which I think is crazy, crazy powerful for you guys to take client intake form. Um, if you remind me, I'll send you ours. It, it, it's like I built it with, um, actually with Nate Green, who built it for Precision Nutrition back then. And it's, it's, it's kind of customized to Vigor, but you guys can take a lot from this. So before somebody even comes in to sit down with us for a strategy session, right, they, they answer a 20-minute form. And it gives us so much kind of firepower when they sit down with us. Now, this is this next one, I promise you, OK? This is when they come in and sit down. This is another, like, superpower seven question, OK? Think about you asking these questions with the client. I call them the super seven readiness questions. Actually, if, if I'm not mistaken, it's a long time ago Dax Moore taught these to me. So when you, once they filled out the form, they sit down with us. It's like, hey, what are the three to five most important ways I can help you as a coach? How will you actually measure I'm helping you with these things? Think about how powerful that is, OK? Like, you're asking them how, they'll, like how they know that, you're, that they're winning. Number three, what do you think would be the most powerful and impactful thing I can do during our coaching? How would that look like? What do you, what do you think will happen if we don't coach together? What do you think constitutes poor coaching on my part? How many of you asked that question? How many of you asked the question, what do you think constitutes poor coaching on my part? They'll already tell you ahead of time what to not fucking do. Pretty important. Right? What do you think I should do if you fall behind in pursuit of your goals and our agreements? How powerful a question is that? Some, you know what a lot of times people do when I ask them this question? Man, like, nobody's asked me that question before. I'm like, well, what do you think? I don't know. It's like just gently nudging me back. Some people will be like, man, keep me accountable. Push me. Like, text me. Get on me. OK, well, how many times do you want me to, to, to like, weekly, bi-weekly? You see what I'm saying? Like, they're, like, you're putting the ball in their court to help them coach you to coach them. It's the, it's the greatest, right? And then sometimes, like I said, the seventh one depends. But how will you know the financial investment for coaching has been a good value? Every time that I've asked these questions, it builds so much value because nobody has ever asked them these questions before. No coach has asked them this. And they're like, damn, like, you really give a shit. Guess what that is? Customer experience. Customer experience. OK? And then a the big thing is, like, you know, if somebody signs up, especially for us when it goes from trial to member, right, we give them a lot of goody shit. As you guys noticed, did you guys get a good amount of goody shit? Right? Like, goody, like everybody loves gifts, right? But we don't tell them that they get anything, by the way, right? So they don't know they're getting it, which makes it even better because it's like, hey, by the way, here's this box. And they're like, whoa. It's a beautiful black box. They open it up, and it's like, damn, Atomic Habits and a bigger shirt and bigger stickers and a bigger journal. I right? used to do a lot of, lot of sub stuff. Like, we keep changing stuff up on like, what they get, but like, that's kind of like the base. And like, they're leaving like, oh, shit. So remember to like, when people sign up, don't let them leave without something, right? Man, not, not just a, I would say, a yellow slip. Here's your bill. And they're like, all right, cool. OK, so celebrating my milestones, sharing physical mentals, providing the, the illusion of a joining an exclusive club is very, very, very important. So these two kind of like, I, I wanted to go over these two phases with you guys, because like, there's more, but just get these two right, and it will change your business as far as customer experience goes. Right? This was actually one for uh, a while back that we did. If um, anybody was a member for more than two years, we got a wireless customized uh, Vigor Ground headphones. So we ordered those. Same thing. We didn't tell them that they'll get it. We just gave it to them. Like, hey, thank you for being uh, a loyal member. We love you and appreciate you. OK? So I'm going to like, I'm looking at the timers. We got 15 minutes. I got stuff to cover. So my question to you. Are you doing some of these in some way? Right? Because what I want you to do today is like when you take notes, there might be a lot of notes. I want you to circle the stuff that's like really important. Right? There's some things that I showed you that are easy to implement. Some of them will take time. 
Now, you, you might be like, why did he just flip to a domino sting? Okay. The reason why I said that is because this is cool because dominoes just tells you where you are in your process. And this is my message to you is like, your clients should always know where they are in the process of their journey. Okay? It's like, hey, your pizza's getting baked, your pizza's on its way, your pizza, right? Like, and you can, when you assess with them and sit down with them on a weekly basis or talk to them, right, essentially that's what you're doing, right? You're keeping their mind right and like where they are in the process. So that's very important. It's like I said, other businesses do it. I mean, even like I said, fast food pizza stuff does it. But it's like, are you doing it in a high-end business? Like they're charging $4.99, like you're charging $4.99 with the dot on the end, you feel me? And so you gotta make sure that you know that where they are in the process. Right? Regular communication is key to eliminate milestones of uncertainty. And I don't see it done well enough. Right? Constant communication, sitting down, here's where you are, here's where you're going. Okay? So lesson, like I said earlier, is audit your customer experience. Okay, so coaching in the digital age. Now, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm going to riff hard, guys, because like I said, I'm looking at the timer, and I know Amy's going to ninja kick me. And she was like, will you able to do 90 minutes? Like, you already know. Now, we talked about all these stu stuff that's skin to skin, okay? But the reality is, is like in the digital age, that's why I called it like, hey, it's for the digital age. The reality is, if you're able to transfer the stuff that we just talked about and show it through media, you're gonna be winning. So, I want you to start like with content ideas because most people that, I come, up, that, that come to me say, how do you get so many content ideas of the things that you're creating on social, on blogs, and this, that, the other, okay? And I'm always just like, hey, think about that client that you have that's your ideal client, okay? And then research who has your audience. And then create variations of content with your experiences. So Sean Hyacinth, who was a good friend of ours, used to work for uh, Men's Fitness, he shared with us that they were doing, they were spending $50,000 a month testing headlines, okay? Testing headlines. Now imagine that, for instance, your audience is like men's health, a men's fitness audience, which for a lot of the guys that like, I know we business coach, you go like, yeah, that's kind of our audience. Okay, cool, well, they did the work and spent $50,000 a month to help you write better headlines. Hmm, okay. So for instance, if businessmen 30 to 50 years old, that same audience is men's health or like a T nation. So maybe you wanna go to men's health and T nation and look at what they're using for headlines. Example. Get back in shape, brand new body in 28 days. 30, 30 protein packed meals to help you lose weight. 10x your life, get more done, waste less time. Flat belly fat, the 28 day plan. Now the thing is if some of these are like, I don't feel comfortable saying that, cool, that's fine, change it up a little bit. But you're learning, like I said, somebody spent $50,000 a month to test these. I mean, unless you wanna spend $50,000 a month, I think this is a pretty good idea. Seven power supplements for men, build a back of steel, age erasers, five ways to look and feel younger. Your action plan to drop two waist sizes, blah, 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 right? So now the thing is, I can take this content and I can make it a blog. I can make it a carousel slide through. I can make it a video. I can make it an email, right? I can actually do one content and put it on multiple platforms. Study people, like Jeff Cavallari, Athlean next. Now the thing is, you can say whatever you want to say, but he has the most YouTube subscribers out of anybody in fitness. And I've heard people go like, man, that guy, this, that. Like, listen, that's dumb. Look at the headlines. How to feel amazing every day, just do this. You can't build muscle and burn fat at the same time. Right? And like I said, if you're like, well, I don't wanna really, that's fine, learn from, this, learn from the headlines. Learn from that stuff. Another person that's this is a different industry, but Chris Du, if you guys wanna follow him, he does phenomenal, like look at the branding just from the IG, right? He does these swipe throughs and they're very valuable. Right? They're, they're very engaging and valuable. Now he's talking to creatives and how to make money and how to be better at build, building the business of being a creative, right? But even if you look at that, that pops to me, right? And he's, I, I know because I've followed him for a while now, he went from like 100,000 to 634,000. He has a very, very great education. I mean, they, basically, they do branding for Google, right? So they're exceptional at what they do, but they're in the business of educating creatives. And uh, I, I'm like, follow him because study how he's doing that because you could do it for your business. Okay, trust me. And like, we just looked at the content side of things, so imagine what we just looked at the headlines, but then you would apply it in this way, okay? That's, a, that's one way of creating really, really engaging content. 
So magnetic marketing, so this is, these are questions that I think all of you guys should ask yourselves because it will create content for you, right? Hey, what's the present pain of having what they want? Your clients, what's the present pain? What are the symptoms? Avoiding taking family pictures, the beach, buying clothes that hide their problem areas. Okay, so when you create content, these are things that you can talk about and give them solutions for it. What's getting in the way of having it? So this is what is happening in their head, right? Enter the conversation in their head. What's getting in the way? Injuries, right? You gotta know the hurdles. What have, you, what have they tried in the past that's let them down? That might be the most important question. So for instance, give you an example, right? Most, like, if you're like, hey, if you've done the detoxes or done these quick fixes and like they haven't worked, because then, guess what? They're like, man, shit, I have done that. They haven't worked. Right? So you know that. If you know what hasn't worked, talk to them in that way. I see a lot of people that try to make marketing that gets likes, but it doesn't, it doesn't really get you clients and customers, right? which is what you really want. How does your offer differ? Like You have to, work, you have to think about that. And then list the beliefs they need to have to want your offer. And uh, I won't go too deep into that, like for instance, when you look at the Netflix documentary of uh, uh, the vegan company that sponsored Netflix to make the documentary, right? They, they basically did it to, to buy into a specific belief. Okay, so you have to believe something to then buy the product, okay? Now the thing is, all of the stuff that I just said, this can be what? It can be e email autoresponders, right? It can be pro uh, profile posts, it can be Facebook, IG, and Live, it can be blogs, it can be videos. You choose, you don't have to do all of these, you pick and choose the ones that you want to do and communicate through the most, right? What's great about this is that, when, at least when it comes to video, you can repurpose it, and we'll touch on that in a little bit, right? Selling your content. So more quality, co quality content means more traffic and more sales, right? If right now you're making one post a week and you went to one post per day, and in your post you say, go to the link in my bio, click that for whatever you're selling, like automatically you just increase your traffic and you're gonna get more leads. I mean, this is like the one-on-one -on -one of marketing, right? But this is an example when we launched our, our eight-week online challenge, right? Two to four posts per day. We had thousands of new followers per, one, uh, per month and then tens, tens of leads per week. And you can even see in the swipe-ups, right? Like people, like 53 swipe-ups, that's traffic to the page. But the thing is, you can't, we talked about being an authority and being an author, and a lot of times it's like, well, I wanna have more leads and I wanna have more authority, I wanna, you know, have celebrity positioning and be an expert, but you don't produce, right? And there has to be a production. And the thing is, yes, like we'll talk a little bit about ads, but this is more about stuff that doesn't cost you anything but time, time and energy, right? Because the thing is, the more quality content you create, the more call to actions that you make, the more clients you will get, period, right? And, and if you study it, so even Mark Zuckerberg said it, stories and reels are the future. Right? So imagine you have XYZ amount of followers, a percentage of those will usually be in your stories because they're the most interested in what you do, right? in the reels. So it's smart to focus on those things, okay? like sell through story. I'll give you guys a whole, a whole framework for that too. And you notice that like story ad spend is going up, feed ad spend is going down, which means that people are spending a lot more time in stories than on feed. It's, it's a very, very good thing to know, right? I'm, giving, I'm trying to give you guys like a focus of where to spend your time and energy as far as like production. Now this will blow your mind, because this is you, okay? Typical cell, I, I think that we're not typical by the way, I think we're more on that higher end right there. Right? Typical cell phone user touches their screen 2,617 times a day, all right? Extreme cell phone user touches the screen 5,400 times a day. I know, Farouj. You're more like 17 times per day. Yeah. But what does this tell us, right? People like touching their fucking screens. Right? So engage them. Polls, questions, fire, right? Because the thing is, the more that they engage in their stories with you, you find yourself the getting pinged are, every also, single the second. They will see of your content. That's how the algorithm works, right? DM me, right? If they DM you, Instagram goes, oh, this person likes this person's stuff because he's DMing them. Oh, this person is engaging. Hey, do you like BMW or Mercedes better? But, 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 but. Instagram goes like, oh, they're engaging with this person. We're gonna show, show them more shit. So if people are already tapping the screens, make sure they tap the screen for you. 
And it's not a lot, it's not a lot to do, because if you're not using any of the questions, hey, Q&A time, quizzes, polls, slider stuff, do it more often, and then more people will see your story. Like even just, like I said, adding one hashtag in your story will, will make a difference too. I mean, it's, it's, like I said, 90 minutes, guys, is, I need 90 days to go over all, like, all this stuff. <laughs> but but these, are, these are things that like legitimately, I'm like, use it, and it will make your business better, and you'll be able to share more, okay? So, and then one of the most key metrics from story is getting the one-on-one -on -one conversations going, right? We live in a culture where now it's like conversation to conversion. Our people DM you, but, but the thing is, but they won't do that if you don't have a call to action. Like nobody's gonna do shit if you don't call them to action. So this is a great example, guys, uh, and I'll show you some cool stuff here too. This is to me, you know, it's coaching, but in the digital age. Like when I coach, I really focus on coaching, but I will spend, you know, multiple times, 15 seconds video on something, right? And I'll, I'll download it and I'll, I'll share it later. But like this is actually, you know, small group. This is uh, Sharda and Martha doing semi-private training right here. It's, it's, it's stuff we do. I'm not making shit up. It's just, it's, I'm just filming what we do and explaining it and actually like creating content of what we're doing. So this is engaging in stories. Now, here's the other thing too. Do you think that your clients are on IG? Yes, like most of, most of them, like most of them are. Do you think that like if they're doing cool shit and you film it and you tag them that they'd like that? Okay, do you think that they'd share it? Okay, do hundreds of their friends see that? Okay. You know what that is? That's referral marketing, right, in the digital age. And when they keep seeing it over and over again, like at what point in time, you know that like pre-COVID, like 82% of Americans want, want to lose weight within a year, pre-COVID. Now that number is probably like who knows what, right? Which means that like people are always thinking about, like at some point in a the year, they're thinking about changing. And if they keep seeing their friends training, having fun, getting results, having better results, what do you think when they go like, fuck it, that's it, I'm getting a coach, what do you think they're gonna do? Like they're hitting up their friend or they're hitting you up directly because they're seeing that all the time. Music blasting, coaching, I mean they see it a month apart and it's like, hold up, you were just deadlifting 200, now you're deadlifting 240, shit. Man, you look a little leaner, god damn it, right? But the thing is, so every single day you could be doing that and it means that people are getting like, they're seeing that every single fucking day over and over and over and over again because your clients are sharing it, right? And that's, that's what it is. It's like word of mouth in the digital age because when you go to sleep, hundreds of people still watch this and you wake up and somebody's like, hey, right? And these are, so for instance, these are reels. I was talking about how the future is stories and reels. Okay, so I'll take a snapshot, 10, 15 seconds of an exercise that a client is doing, put it together in a reel, and then, I mean, it's like I said, different clients from, if you go down to reels, I got tons of these, right? And you can also see, because uh, IG promotes reels, have a lot of views, 30,000, 7,000, 11,000, there's a bunch of 19,000, there's 20, right? It's like half a million views in the last, whatever, two, three months, maybe, okay? But, but it's not anything made up, it's like, here's our clients doing cool shit, right? And then, obviously, in, in the copy, I actually give value of like explain sometimes like what we're doing, why we're doing it. All right, but this takes you, for instance, six times 10 seconds. So one minute of an hour session, you're just filming. And the cool thing is that you can use the video as coaching. That's what I like to do a lot of times. It's like I video it, like, hey, see this? All right, cool, do another video. See the difference when I coach them up? Okay, so you can use that as well. And so thinking about that and also Something that's very, very important for you guys to know, and this is, it's difficult for most people, is the live video. But what it's telling you is that it's very, very underutilized, right? Like Facebook and IG really want you to go live, right? They'll actually promote it. If you go live, they'll be like, yes, here, more people should see it. But why do most people not go live? I'll, I'll, tell, you, I'll tell you why, like it's something that stops them from creating a lot of content, putting themselves out there. It's something called the poppy seed syndrome, okay? The poppy flower, should I say, the poppy flower syndrome. If you guys know the poppy flowers, you know, when they're aligned, like in a garden, if one of them sticks out, they chop it off, right? Because they have to be all nicely aligned. So the poppy flower syndrome is this. 
If you, th- like, in your, in your heart, you're like, man, if I stand out, I'm going to get judged, persecuted, people are going to laugh at me, you know, I'll be, I'll be embarrassed, they'll be like, ah, that's stupid, you can't talk well, this is, and because of that, you don't put yourself out there, right? And that's something that you really, really have to get over, and the power of you helping people has to be bigger than the power and fear of you, like, getting embarrassed or judged or persecuted. Because at the end of the day, no, nobody, like, most people worry about their own shit and their own problems. They're not really worrying about you too much, right? But it's your own internal, vo- like, narrative that has to change. And like I said, you have to over, be overpowering with the, like, I want to help folks. I want to put out great value. It has to be stronger than that. Because then, like I said, then you start doing live video and things. Like, and, and like I said, I wanted to come back to this. This was, like, week, I don't know, three or four when we were doing live streaming charity boot camps, right? So we'd show up. We'd have a couple of coaches. I'm coaching them through this. And what you don't see, you can see that there's 217 comments, like almost 1,000 likes. They had, this had about, we had 300 people live all across the world doing a workout with us, and we ended up having like 60,000 views. Like, we didn't promote it, right? It's just, like I said, Facebook loves live. And then people start commenting, sharing. It was supporting, that one was supporting uh, Hunger Not Impossible, which is an organization. So we did it for Hunger Not Impossible. I don't know how much money we raised. Hey, click, either click on this link. Send me that you paid, and I'll match it, right? So people would be sending me their receipts, and at the end, I would just match what they paid, and we l- raised at least 2000 that day for this, right? But people from all around the world, like, I'm coaching. It's a live workout, right? Could you, so think about this. Like, even right now, depending on which state you're in, could you do a live charity like this? I mean, you could do it live and record it and do a double whammy. Could you do a seminar in-house for your, for your clients, and there's 40 of them there, and then record it live for the world to see. I mean, you could do this all day long, and you're doing like, you're basically getting this double, triple whammy, right? Because you got people watching live from all over, like around your area. It, it stays recorded, so you can download it. You can send it to people in an email. Like, guys, every single one of you can do this. The, the thing is that you're already doing it. You're already doing it. You're just not organizing yourself to do it strategically. That's it. Right, but hey, would you want to have 60,000 views and hundreds of comments and thousands of people follow you because of stuff like this? And this is live stuff that, that Facebook and IG want to promote. A lot of times what we did is be like laptop, live stream camera, phone. So we do both, IG Live and Facebook Live at the same time. Right, because this is where it's all going, by the way. Right, and it's kind of already there. But both platforms want to get to a place where you're going live and you're essentially selling shit like you know, QVC. So, Imagine that like we're, I'm, I'm sharing information, I'm doing a Q&A, and I'm literally going like, hey guys, listen, like make sure to sign up for this program, Athlete for Life program, like click the link, it'll take you to the app, you can download it. And the link, it's not even in the comments, it pops up like QVC. Okay, that, that's where things are going. So do you feel that it might be very, very important for you to get good at speaking and video? Okay, and if you wanna have a little cackle, right, go back 13 years on my YouTube channel, and when you're like, hey, you're a natural, and just watch, watch that, right? And you'll have a cackle, because pretty much like what I do is like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not great at speaking, I'm a little, so I'm just like, I right, Luca, I lift very heavy weights many times. You know, I just do wild shit, and it's like, that's it. And then after a while, like, you know, I get more confident with stuff, and so on and so forth. Oh, Amy gave me the, gave me the wrap it up button. Damn, okay. <laughs> so the point being is, Right, like it's, it's a practice, it's a skill like we talked about earlier today, okay? You practice it and then you get good at this stuff and then you have an advantage, okay? So you can create, this is the cool thing about it, you create it once you repurpose it. That live video that we did for charity, we chopped it up a little bit, it went on YouTube, it was on Facebook, you send it an email and go like, hey listen guys, we did this charity event, if you wanna watch the workout on replay, please go here and donate, you know, if you do this, I, we, we did this for you guys, we'd really appreciate, I can't make you do it, but donate, people were like, oh, dude, I'm doing your workouts at home. They're so dope. Some people would go and pay the money. You raise more money. Right? You can repurpose every single thing that you do multiple times over. And that's what's so great about it. Right? All right, we're finishing off. Man, the timing is pretty damn good. So we are going we to go hard in the paint on this. Right? So just some things that are working that you guys can use. And we talked about this. Right? Acquiring new clients can cost five times more than holding on to the existing ones. Create a list of all the past people, when, and, and go beyond 30, 60 days. I'll go like a year, and a, half, a year and a half or two years and get basically, hey, I was just reading, you know, and then fill in the article. 
and thought of you might be interested. Hope all, hope, all, hope all as well, Luca. You know how many times I've sent an email out like that and then started a conversation and got people back? Send it to 100 people and like you'll get 10 clients back, 15 clients back. I, like I promise you, I promise you. But make it a system though, right? This shouldn't be like a one-timer, make it a system, right? Use the case study and outreach technique and blunt post method, so those are two. Hey, you know, so this is a really great one, it's like, hey, uh, me and my team are putting together a case study program for men who want to look great naked, often losing within 15, 25 pounds in the next 30 days. I want to touch base with you along a few other connections before we open applications to the public next week. Last year's were, results were phenomenal. So it's like, hey, let me know. And then, for instance, if there's somebody that had great results, here's a re quick review on, on Jay, and then you can insert link, like one of our clients. Craig, Craig is obviously a great guy when it comes to uh, social media marketing. I'll show you uh, uh, another one of the strategies you guys can use if you haven't already learned it from him. But blog posts, if you create a ton of value, now this is the key though, you have to create a ton of value, right? If you create value for people, then you can do these posts and they work. Now if you don't really share stuff and then all of a sudden you're like, I'm looking for three alpha men and women who wanna have, it's not gonna work. But if you're constantly like, you know, what Gary Vee says, like jab, 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 right hook, give, 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 and then ask, then you will get this. Like, and if you do that, for instance, once every two weeks, like you're gonna get just off a of blunt post new clients. Now obviously, you know, you do a, a, a different blunt post than this, but this is a great example, okay? Developing hero stories. So using social proof to show prospective clients who've helped others just like them. You should be collecting those, like obviously in case studies and video testimonials, but what's great is like, for instance, doing, uh, like if you have, an article or a blog post about a client, you know, and this is just an example. Hey, how busy Seattle nurse deadlifted 315 uh, pounds and got lean, leaner than her college soccer playing days without living in the gym. Now, what do you think that s there's pe specific people that would click that link and then read the article? Absolutely, and also if you have clients that are like that, you can now create a content around their transformation and what they did that worked and people will be reaching out to you. Now that can be a blog post, it could be <laughs> stuff on, like I said, it could be stuff on IG, a lot of different ways. Spear methods, so these are just quick, like ways to ton, uh, generate tons of leads quickly, like Eric Barkat uh, gave me this one, but hey, do you wanna know the number one fab burning plan for 2021? If you're interested, just reply to this email. Question for you, hey, do you wanna know the best way to add 10 pounds of lean muscle over the next six months? If you're interested, reply to this email. And you guys can take a snapshot of this, right? Because what I, what I want you to do is have a system where you're strategically sending these things out like, okay, every 12 weeks. For instance, certain things you do daily, certain things you do weekly, certain things you do monthly. Okay, hybrid programs and challenges. I've talked about the man's formation program, right? For instance, things like just for, just for men, a program for eight weeks to transform. And it's like, hey, we're opening up XYZ spot beta program. 125, like I said. I'm triple down on, on video testimonials. Every single month you guys should have a system when people are getting results, to do video testimonials with them. Two, three minutes, and go like, hey, do you mind if I grab you after your session today, just to ask you a couple questions about your experience and your results here at Vigor? Yeah, no problem. Okay, and then it's like, those are assets that can be built into, for instance, like you just have them stored in a Dropbox that later get used for marketing for your websites and things like that. All it is, is like I said, it's a structure that you just follow on a consistent basis. And then this one, all right, this is like I said, from Craig. I'll, I'll, I'll finish with that before uh, I hand it off because I'm feeling sweat with the timer ticking down right here. But social story selling system, you guys can look into it, right? It's like you have six stories, and imagine that the first one was actually giving an example. Let's say the email subject line, and I was shooting a story, and I'd be like, hey, like, do you think that like building muscle and losing body fat at the same time is impossible, right? So that's, that's a curious, curiosity driven headline. Second story, you put the poll up and you go, do you think you can do it or not, right? So people engage. And then you do teach or preach. Matter of fact, you can build muscle and lose body fat at the same time if you do these strategic things. Like when it comes to like, for instance, you gotta keep your calories high, increase activity, do a specific type of training, right? The takeaway is like in certain circumstances you can, boom, and then you share social proof. Like this is uh, Luke Wilson, guy I worked with for six months. And like right there, you can see he dropped like almost 8% body fat and went up 6%, uh, not 6%, 6 pounds, put on 6 pounds of muscle, right? So that would be, for instance, something that I would share and then have a call to action and be like, hey, if you also want to put on muscle and get leaner and like look, feel, and perform like athlete, DM me. 
right? That's a, that's a six-phase social story, right? And you can use things like this. You know, you can use text. It doesn't have to be a before and after. It can be text, right, from people that are just like, hey, you got me in the best shape of my life, whatever else it may be. Uh, that was an example from a story of a lady that was watching a reel, right, that said, hey, I just signed up for a trial because I was watching the reels of, of your clients, okay? So once again, like, use this, and I'm going to have to slide through to the end. You guys, oh, at zero, zero, it just cuts me off? Is that, is that what you did, Amy? Man, it was the last slide, and it was me dropping the mic. Shit, okay. All right. So finishing, like I said, hey, guys, I wanted this to be, and I, and I know it can be a lot, so I, I hope that you have a lot of notes. But more so than anything, I don't want you to just have a lot of notes. Like, go and take action on even 10, 15, 20% of what I talked about today and be ruthless, like ruthless about it. Oh, there we go. Now it starts moving, right? Be ruthless about it. And then, like I said, be ruthless for the next 30 days because what I want in every year when we do this stuff, and what I want to do is, I'll bring it back, is that, like, people that leave here go, like, I went and fucking, like, did this stuff, and, man, it made such a massive difference that they reach out. Right? But be ruthless about it. Okay? Let it be a snowball effect where you, you're inspired and you're fired up and you leave and you take massive action on it. Okay? You, can, you won't be able to do everything here. But if you do, like, the, the things that were aha moments and 20% of those, like, I promise you, not only will you have really great results, you'll get the snowball rolling and you'll have momentum. And it's going to change shit. It will change shit. So, you know, I know maybe it was a little bit of a fire hose. I'm not apologizing for it. I want the first one to always just be a shit ton of value. So thank you very much. I hope that you guys got a ton of value. Please apply this. Let's rock and roll. Everybody.